other name that's higher, no other name that's stronger, no other name forever. I will praise the name. Oh, no other name can heal us, no other name can free us, no other name so precious. Let's praise, Let's the, praise the name. name. No other name that's higher, no other name that's stronger, no other name forever. I will praise the name. No other name can heal us, no other name can free us, no other name so precious. Let's Let's just praise the name of the Lord right now. Jesus, we praise you, Lord. We love you, God. We give you glory and honor, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord God. Lord, there's nobody like you, Lord Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, the Lord's been good to me. The Lord's been good to me. And here amongst this great cloud of witnesses that we have, it's easy to arrive at uh, the statement that God has been good. Amen? Can we just arrive there together? God has been good. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to give you a chance to faithful in your tithes and offerings if Brother Tom and Brother Barry can help me at this time. Amen. If you have that ready, you can go ahead and bring that and this time. That's an old favorite. That's an old favorite song. We can just make a joyful noise together, amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's all right, you can let out a joyful noise. That's okay. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! sing together hallelujah we've come to praise him we've come to praise him we've come to praise him and lift his holy name make a joyful noise unto the lord make a joyful noise Praise him. 
At this time, we're going to dismiss Bicoda uh, in youth at this time. Amen. Amen. In the adult class, uh, we'll be staying here in the sanctuary at this time, and Pastor's going to be teaching the adult class today, and so let's just welcome him to this podium right now, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, my, 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 it is exciting what the Lord is doing, and what a time we had here Sunday night, hallelujah, what a service, uh, the Lord just moved mightily and lives were definitely impacted and changed and people were healed people were delivered and the testimonies continue we're just thankful for what the lord is doing Hallelujah. amen it's it's certainly not us although we're just the we're just a vehicle he is the healer he is the deliverer and i would like to say a special thanks to everyone that was involved uh, in um, this particular service uh, special thanks to the outreach department, the, uh, uh, everybody was involved in w from one end to the other. Uh, the music uh, team, the media team, everybody. With all the work that went into it, we appreciate everyone's involvement. It takes, it takes a team. And we appreciate everybody working together and seeing good things happen. And, uh, and we're just determined to see a continuation of that. We're going to continue. I, uh, that was just a, a little of what I believe the Lord's going to do. Praise God. And so there is, uh, there is no end to what the Lord will do. Amen. It's good to have uh, Michelle Davison with us tonight. She was one that was uh, impacted Sunday night. And uh, the Lord blessed her. Amen. Praise God. We, uh, <coughs> after her blessing, she wanted to get baptized, so we did that. And she was buried in a watery grave in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you come receive this certificate? Congratulations. I'd have a picture if you don't mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. We're, 
We're thankful for five individuals who were baptized on Sunday. Amen. And uh, we, uh, we don't know exactly how many received healings and deliverance, but uh, we're thankful for all that did. Uh, the Lord knows, and that's what's important. He's, he's the one that's keeping all the stats. Praise God. It's good to have uh, Thad Robinson with us tonight. Welcome. Uh, good to have you. Brother Myers was uh, telling me he's come as his guest tonight. and uh, This is Brother Brad Robinson's brother. He pastors down in Belton. And so uh, we're glad to have you with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The Lord is, is just so good. So good. I'd like to go to the book of Jeremiah tonight. And, uh, we have uh, experienced what I would consider a high. And uh, I want to stay high. <laughs> Uh, but here, here's what happens uh, is that once we have fasted and uh, we come off that fast, this flesh wants to feast. And after we have put in extra time and, and prayer, this flesh wants a break. Come on, after we have made great strides, this old flesh is, is battling against us. And so let me encourage you tonight, just keep fighting your flesh, and let's continue to fast and pray and work, uh, because the Lord's got greater things yet to come. Amen. He does. I, I, I want to uh, really uh, address a few concerns tonight, not that there's a, a problem in this house tonight, but I think sometimes just a little bit of caution is, is worth uh, what we need. It's just uh, the, the way that we understand God works and our flesh works. Uh, we don't want anybody to go backwards. We, we want to go forward. Everybody say forward. forward. We got to have forward thinking and then we're going to have to keep putting one foot in front of the other spiritually. And so uh, let me just uh, strongly admonish you tonight of all the, the, the ground that you have gained spiritually Keep that momentum going. Yeah. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> Amen. We may have to crucify this flesh, but that's a good thing. Uh, and, and it's appetite. Because uh, I, I've been in uh, the work of the kingdom here for over 35 years. And, and I, I've always seen these highs and lows that, that come like waves. But uh, I, I, I want to. I want to ride this wave for a while. Yeah. Amen. I, I want this to be one that I, I can grow on. I, I want it to be one that would thrust me to the highest level I have ever been. Yeah. Anybody feel that way? You, you, want to, you want to reach a place higher than you have ever been. And so uh, we've got a good start, so let's maintain it. Let's continue keeping on. Amen. And, but uh, I'm going to share a few things tonight about how people could go backwards, and uh, we don't want to go back. I think we, we sing a song around here, and, and a part of that statement is, I won't go back. I won't go back. And, uh, but we are challenged with things day in and day out. And, um, and I, I do believe that our greater challenges are ahead of us. I'm not a... Not a prophet or the son of the prophet, but uh, and, I, and I don't preach doom and gloom, but um, just looking at reality, uh, you know, as far as our world and its condition and our economy, uh, you'd have to be more than optimistic to think things are going to get better. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, the Word of God tells us it is going to get worse. And so whether we like... Uh, like it or not, you know, we're reverting to those days that Jesus talked about that uh, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be. There's, there's climate and condition, and uh, we are, we're there. And so I believe that the coming of the Lord is at hand. 
Everybody ought to say amen. amen. Coming of the Lord is at hand. And that means I want to be ready to meet the Lord. There's nothing more important than, than for me to be saved. Uh, I'm, I'm like you. I have responsibilities and duties and obligations and desires of, in this life. But there's, there's nothing that should be more important than my salvation. Amen. I, I was uh, reading an article on the Internet about some crazy stuff that's going on in our world. I just can't. It's hard for me to imagine some of the craziness that's going on. Uh, I uh, saw an article where their guy sold a, uh, or selling some dogs at between 2 and $4 million. Who would have ever thought it? <laughs> it's a, Crazy kind of world. Well, let's go to the word of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter number 7, and we'll begin here at verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. How many wants it to be well with you? Well, we, we need to... Uh, Hear the voice of God, and let him be our God, and keep his commandments. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in their counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. That's that's, uh, what we're going to uh, discuss in this Bible study tonight, is uh, we, we can't afford to go backward. We have got to go forward. Come on, somebody say forward. 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 Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. I really believe that we're in a generation where this newer generation is doing worse than their fathers. I think we got some great kids and young people in this generation. I believe that too. But I do believe that evil is is abounding in, in great strides. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. To me, it is a very frightening thing for me to think about being lost. It's, it's just absolutely frightening. I don't know of any thought that would occupy my mind that's any more fearful or frightening than for me to think about being lost. I just don't want to be lost. I, I, I know enough to know that there's consequences of being lost. There's consequences. Now, we're living in a world that doesn't believe in consequences. They don't believe that God's going to judge mankind, but he is because the word says so. And we will be judged according to the word. And uh, and so I I have a tremendous responsibility uh, to God over my soul. I want my soul to be saved. I've, I've said it many times, and I don't mind saying it again tonight. I'm really not concerned about this old body. Now, I want to... Take care of it because it's the only vehicle I've got to get around in. But uh, uh, one day, uh, by the way of nature, it'll go back to the dust of the ground. The only hope that we have is is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I know that that day will come that this mortal can put on immortality. But we're not going to have this flesh and blood and bones to contend with. Amen. It's going to pass away. What then? When that day does come, what's it going to be like? Uh, And so I want to be saved. And so the prophet Jeremiah was describing the plight of these that went 
backwards rather than forwards. And I think that's a, that's a sad passage of Scripture to read. You know, we have sad events that happen in life, you know. Uh, well, to some people, it's just more natural events than spiritual events. They think it's sad because they got weeds in their garden or some ship perhaps got stranded or maybe their guitar doesn't have strings. But we're talking about something that's far greater than those things. Uh, we, we, have must, we must evaluate where we are with God and make sure that we are on track, amen, to meet the Lord with peace in our life. Amen. And so it's, uh, it's always been a very sad thing to me as a pastor, preacher. Uh, I really, I've devoted my, pretty much my entire life to helping people build a relationship with God. And one of the greatest disappointments and tragedies is to see good people that could do great things in the kingdom go backwards. It's, uh, it's, it just, uh, well, it just affects us. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, I'm not just talking about somebody that might be uh, a part of your immediate family. I'm talking about somebody that, you, you know, that's not related to you at all, but yet you have been involved in their life and seeing them uh, live a good life for God and, and then see that testimony just absolutely ruined. I, I have sat and listened to people as they have come up with every imaginable self-justification that you can imagine. I've seen relationships suffer, families suffer as a result of their breaking away and going backwards. I've seen the wrecking of a reputation. What we are talking about here is pretty much like Judas is a carrot who had obtained part of the ministry of Jesus Christ, who saw the miracles, I mean, day in and day out. And the power of God manifests through Jesus Christ. And yet he reached a point that he betrayed him. And there was no going back. I would have liked to have read that he went back and repented. But he, did, he, he found no repentance there. And he went out and hung himself because he couldn't live with what he did. Uh, when we talk about going backwards, uh, it's not just something that somebody all of a sudden decides, you know, I, I, think, I think I'm just going to quit. That's not really ha how it happens. I've never seen it happen that way. I'm telling you, I've never, I, in all the years of experience I've had, and even from others that uh, I know that uh, people don't just uh, decide one day that I'm just going to throw in a towel. But I'm going to tell you where it happens. It happens in those private moments in your life. When you are all alone somewhere, you're, when you began to meditate and you began to think, am I going to do this or am I going to do that? It's like a fork in the road in your private personal life that you make a decision. Amen. And if you make that decision to go backward rather than forward, well, all of a sudden, there comes that justification. The church or the preacher or somebody or something, you know, that it caused it. But the truth of the matter is it was just self. Now, let, let me explain this a little bit. I, um, I'm not the expert here. I'm not trying to sound like an expert. I'm just trying to speak from experience. But I have seen people keep up a front. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen them, they, they continue, they'll, they'll come to church and, and they'll still want to be involved in the activities of the church and, and maybe fill an office in the church and, uh, and all the time that the, they're, they're going backwards rather than forward. And then... There's been occasions that I would ask them, I said, is everything okay? 
Oh, yeah, pastor, things couldn't be better. Say, can that happen? It does happen. It does happen. It, it reached a place to where they began to live a double life, and they start living a lie. Because what we're talking about, when people move away from God, it's a matter of the heart. The heart is desperately weakened, and who can know it? God can. God does. But God can help you see what's in you if you'll ask Him. If you'll communicate with Him. If you'll pray, you'll seek after God, then you'll find that, hey, there's, there's just something in, in my heart. And let me use it also in this in my spirit or in my attitude that really needs changing. And we can reach a place to where we can really get hard. We can. We, we, we can say, well, if this person would have done this, then it wouldn't be like this. And, and so... We get to hardening ourselves against situations, and our heart gets hard. Psalm 78, 37, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. See, it's important that uh, we be steadfast in this covenant. Now, if you're in a marriage covenant, you need to be steadfast. few more <laughs> we believe that come on if you if you've said I do amen and you made a covenant with God and man and we we need to keep that but in our relationship you know we we, we made a covenant with God that that when a person goes backwards they're reneging on that they're breaking that covenant and uh, I, I'm not wanting to be rude or crude tonight, but what happens is there's, there's these feelings that begin to set in on a person, and, uh, and they, they can become unthankful. I, I've seen this happen. I, I, I've called up people and say, what, what can we do to help you? I don't need you. I don't need the church. Leave me alone. I, I've seen it turn into rebellious actions. I've seen it, uh, well... You know, there's a lot of issues that can come out of that. It's dangerous to allow ourselves to take one step backward. And so I'm here to encourage us tonight. Let's take a step forward. Come on, let's keep moving forward. Come on, let's keep calling upon the name of the Lord. Come on, let's keep on worshiping Him. Let's keep on loving Him. Let's keep on submitting ourselves. Say, God, whatever you want in my life, that's what I'm willing to do because I want to be saved. I've known people who interpret their moving backward as moving forward. I've talked to people about some of their actions because I'm just trying to help them. And they're saying, well, Pastor, I've never been so spiritual in all my days. What can happen is there can be this spirit of delusion that can get a hold of a person and make them think, Everything's cool. Everything's good. Everything's going to be all right when they know that they're not doing right. I'm, I'm talking about people, amen, who have a relationship with God. Folks, we've got to keep going forward. Forward. And one of the ways that you can continue to move forward is to make sure that you don't surround yourself with the wrong people. Come on, you, you, you've got to be careful who you keep company with. Amen. I, I know that Jesus Christ himself, you know, he, he ate with publicans and sinners. He, he, he was surrounded with sinners, but he didn't become a partaker of that. And so it is with us. We, we're trying to reach the lost. We're not trying to be detached from them, but we're not trying to involve ourselves in what they're doing. Amen. And so we have to be careful, and not even to the point that we say, well, I, I think I'm just going to camouflage myself among these folks. Well, that, that doesn't work, folks. 
You have to separate yourself and be separate from them. And I, I really like the ideal. Because I don't want people to think I'm one of them. You know, the reputation of this world is not good. I want to be one of his. The Bible says, by their fruit, you should know them. And so we want to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, all of these things that are important to us. And what happens is that when a person takes a step backward rather than forward, then we find that these things change. See what happens? So, things change to where the person that is, does these things cannot see it clearly. That means we're, we're being judgmental. It's just a, it's just a common fact. You, you should know them by their fruit. You, you'll know if, if they got peace or they don't, if they got joy or they don't, if they got love or they don't, or if they're, they're patient or not. You'll you'll. It's easy to find that out. So we have to be careful that we don't hang around with the wrong people because there's just something about that influence that if they're always murmuring and complaining, and uh, it wouldn't be hard for you to start murmuring and complaining. People that's taking steps backward, they don't really care about wisdom and counseling because what happens is it's, it's a heart issue and that, that heart brings deception. That's the reason why we're in our right mind and our hearts are fixed on God, that uh, it would be well and good for us to, to bounce things off of each other and make sure everything is right and everything is well. Because if we start going down the trail of the Lone Ranger, then we'll just continue to go down that road and nobody can help us. Because we're right and everybody else is wrong. So we need to surround ourselves with good people. Good people. Amen. We also need to spend time in the right places and not the wrong places. Did you know that we can be influenced to go places and do things that we ought not to do. Sorry just for me to be playing tonight. What, what's happening is we're living in a day and time where when you talk to somebody, you know, you, you, know, you, you, you don't really need to go to these triple X adult houses. Well, pastor, I really don't see anything wrong with it. I'm an adult. That's dangerous. And the thing is, a person reaches that place to where they get affected and they get infected. And they don't see no wrong in it. And they don't want anybody telling them that they're wrong. That's a big one. How many of those that say, well, you're not my mama, you're not my daddy, you're not my pastor, you're not whatever. doesn't matter. Somebody's trying to be helpful. People justifying what they want to do. You know, our, our eyes do affect our hearts. And we do believe the word of God that we shouldn't set no wicked thing before our eye because it has an influence. We are, we're living in this media generation to where we have to be extra careful. Come on, somebody ought to shout amen. amen. It does matter what we watch, what we listen to. It does matter. You, you, you can't keep your heart pure, your mind clean, if you're uh, looking at garbage and trash, things that Arouses emotions in your body. 
I'm talking about that's what causes people to take a step back. I'm here to say, move that stuff out of the way. Let's, let's move forward. Let's make sure that doesn't get in our path. That doesn't hinder us. That doesn't beset us that, that we're going forward. Well, Pastor, I just have a, a different view. I have a different conviction and a different viewpoint. I, I've heard it all. It's not really whether it's my viewpoint or not. It's a matter of whether it's God's viewpoint or not. I, I'm just the messenger. Proverbs 14 and 14 says, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Here, here's, a, here's a word of warning. If that person continues to use the mask, you know what will happen? It'll be like the church in Ephesus. Their spiritual life will cool off until they get absolutely cold and calloused and indifferent. We just have to take precautions along the way. I, I think uh, men that are capable of working ought to work. I, really, I believe the Bible bears that out. Uh, we, we have too many deadbeat fathers today. We have too many lazy men today. We, we just have... Uh, well, you know what I mean. But we need men to be men. Men that will step up and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Serving God is important to me. Amen. Prayer and Bible reading is important to me. Yes. Not going to let anything get in the way from there. I know we're all, we all have our temptations. I know what it's like. You know what it's like. I, um, I, I, I'll just share this because I'm not trying to separate myself from you. We're all in this together. Um, it's several, several years ago that, uh, there was an opportunity that I felt like I could have taken had I wanted to take it. And um, I was in a situation uh, doing the work of the kingdom to the best of my ability and, and, and barely, uh, barely making it financially. But it was the test of my life. And, uh, and I could have uh, taken a job that, uh, that would have paid about $100,000 a year. That's temptation. It's temptation. Uh, and, uh, but I didn't take it because I want to please God. Please God. Uh, we're we're trying, to, trying to be in the will of God. Uh, my, my wife and I, we, we, we had friends and uh, places that... Ha that if we had stayed, they wanted us to stay where we're at and felt God moving us somewhere else, that they, they would have given us a $100,000 house to stay there. Isn't that right, Sister Brunsley? But we declined that because we want to be in the will of God. I've got to be in the will of God to be saved. Hallelujah. That's many years ago. That we have to have some disciplines in our life. I'm talking about taking a step forward tonight. Well, I'll, I'm not. I, I'm just not fasting as much as I did a couple of weeks ago, and I'm not praying as much as I did a couple of weeks ago. And I, come on, let's don't cool off here. This, this is a place that can determine uh, our spirituality. And I, I think the Lord really wants us to move forward. Amen. Amen. And I, I'm not saying that you have to fast every day or 
You have to pray two hours every day, but we need to continue the process if we're going to be spiritual. But we got to keep developing good habits. We don't replace those good habits with hitting and missing. It's easy for us to busy ourselves so much that, that uh, we don't take the time to do the most important things. Some of the things that we don't think we would ever do, if we're not careful, we could wind up doing them. How many loves the Word? Love the Word of God? You know, I, I've, I've seen and heard people talk about, oh, how they love the Word of God. I doubt if they even cracked the Bible open in the last year of some I know. That love grows cold. We can't let it grow cold. We've got to keep moving forward. See, there's this delusion. I'm, I, I, this is critical tonight. I'm, I'm almost finished. Is that a person, that sometimes they take a step back because maybe somebody did hurt them. Maybe something did happen. Maybe they got greatly disappointed. But I'm going to confess to you, I've been hurt and I've been disappointed. Anybody else? <laughs> well, that's right. We're not in this alone. It happens. It happens. But we rise above that because we want to be saved. And so we press on. But in this process of, of us <clears throat> holding on to God and growing in God, that if we let down our guard, then there is this process that can happen to us, amen, to where we can... We can get this thinking, and it's horrible thinking. Well, if I get a little cold or, uh, you know, if I, if I just take a break, you know, I'm just burnt out. You ever heard anybody say that? What happens when a person gets burned out is, you know what the telltale signs are? Well, hadn't seen them around church lately. They don't make the prayer meetings. They don't talk about reading the Word. They don't even have much to say about the preaching. Those are telltale signs, folks. As a pastor, I could tell you that two of the main steps that a person takes when they start leaving the house of God is that is they gradually start missing church and they stop supporting the work of the kingdom. Two of the main signs. Seen it a hundred times. But they get this thinking that, well, I just got to have a break. I'll get back to God, and I'll be stronger than I've ever been once I rest a little bit. Now, I believe in vacations, and I believe in resting. I believe in that. But I don't believe we take a vacation from God. And so when a person gets that thinking, well, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to take a break. I'll get back to God. Normally, they don't even comprehend what they're saying or what they're doing. Now, here I'm going to go out on a limb a little bit because I realize every situation is different and God is the judge. Everybody understand that? But I believe that when people who have been born again of the water and the spirit and they have had a genuine relationship with God, that they choose to go away from God and they make it up in their heart, well, I'm, I'm just going to do this. I'm and they, they may not be sorry. They're just going to do it. God might say, I'm just saying, are you with me? God might say, hey, I'll help you. Because the word talks about people reaching a place, amen, in that arena that he would send them a strong delusion and they would believe a lie and be damned. Why? Because they received not a love for the truth. We've got to love this truth. Love this truth. Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life. We've got to love him. We've got to love him. And when we do that with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and strength, then you find that there is some safety. There's some security. But it, we, can't, we can't play around with this.
I've seen people take a step backward and, and it's just a little thing. I've seen people walk in and, what, what's going on? Oh, I just thought I'd get a tattoo. <laughs> small thing. Small thing. But those small things leads to other things. That's the delusion. That's what people don't understand. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. They say, it doesn't hurt anybody. No, you're not hurting me. But how does God feel about it? And what direction are you going? Is this a step forward? This is not my favorite subject tonight. Because it's probably one of those areas that has been more painful in my life than any other area. Because there's people I know that are away from God. I pray for them. But you know what I find? I find they are harder. They are more brittle. They are more calloused. And they're far more difficult to reach now than before they ever had their first experience with God. I'm thankful for every prodigal that comes home. Come on, we rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. But not every prodigal comes home. Even when God extends that rod and inflicts pain, oftentimes they don't turn. I'm out of time. Stand with us tonight. I think we ought to just talk to the Lord for a moment. See, I'm, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. Lord, I want you to guide my feet. I want you to protect the direction my feet are going. I don't want to go backwards, Lord. Not one step. I want to press on. I want to press forward. Lord, help us tonight. I, I don't want to be a, a rebel. Lord, I don't want to disappoint you. Lord, I don't want to leave the beauty of what we have been a part of. But Lord, I'm asking you to help me tonight. To, Lord, to let the tenderness of your love forever be shed abroad in my heart by your spirit. Lord, don't let me forget all of your blessings and all of your benefits. Lord, don't let me forget, Lord, I'm going to stand before you and I've got to give an account. And I want to do it with joy. I want to do it with pleasure. Lord, I want the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable unto you, God. I want to move forward every day. And I'm asking you, Lord, to help me. Help me to rend my heart before you. Lord, I want, I want to draw closer to you, nearer to you, dearer to you. Lord, tonight, help us, Lord, to move forward. 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 The psalmist David was about to make some bad mistakes and didn't have the best of attitude. And he admitted it. He said, My feet had well nigh slipped until I went to the house of the Lord. I wonder if we really could just go to God personally for a moment here. Just go to God personally. Whatever our needs are, just talk to Him. Could we do that? Maybe you'd like to walk up to the front here for a moment tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we come surrendering our all to You tonight. Lord, we yield to You, Lord, because we realize that we're nothing without You. We could do nothing apart from You. Lord, we all need You desperately, Lord. God, it is in you that we live, we move, we have our being. And tonight, Lord, we're asking you to help us. Help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'd like to encourage us to pray for, for the prodigals tonight that may have taken a step backwards, that they would turn back to God. Can we pray that prayer together? Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we're asking you tonight to turn every prodigal back to you, God. Let their hearts be softened. God, I'm asking you to help them to become yielding, Lord, to your spirit. For we know that no man cometh to the Father except your spirit draw them. Lord, I pray that you would awaken their consciousness to the need of their soul. I pray tonight, Lord, that you would, Lord, send your holy angels, God, and turn them into the path of righteousness. Father, we ask you to save our children. God, save those that are away from you, Lord. Those, oh God, who have made tragic mistakes. God, you are merciful. You are forgiving. But Lord, we pray that they would turn back to you while there is yet an opportunity, while there is time. God, draw them to you, Lord. Save them from this untoward generation. Lift them from their dilemma. Save them, Lord. We ask in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining together in prayer. I've always said if I, if I was that prodigal, I would certainly hope that there would be a people somewhere that would fast and pray for my soul. I feel like we have a responsibility to pray for those that we know that may have gone backwards rather than continue going forward. And show them mercy. Show them kindness. Show them the love of God. We had to be reminded that we're, we're only continuing forward because of the grace of God. And by His grace. By His grace. Hallelujah. Thank you tonight. Appreciate you. And say again, it's good to have our guests here tonight. Let's go forward. 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 Part of our theme this year is upward, so let's continue. Forward and upward. Amen. God bless you. Dismiss you in the fear of the Lord. Join us tomorrow night in our prayer meeting if you can. <laughs>